hello so i'll be discussing liver function test today but prior to understanding what is the function of the liver we need to understand what are the tissues which constitute the liver so that we can interpret the different liver function test to identify the site of injury kind of injury and thereby the differentials that can involve those particular injury uh, tissue injuries in the liver now we have to understand liver has parenchymal cells and non parenchymal cells parenchymal cells is hepatocytes and cholangiocytes while your non parenchymal cells consist of your blood vessels in the biliary ducts in the endoretic uh, endo endoreticular uh, cells including sinusoidal endoepithelium nk cells kaffir cells and then we have hepatic stellet cells your hepatocytes has the function of production that is synthesis and also detoxification your bile uh, duct cells they help in the movement of the bile uh, your uh, nk cells kaffir cells are the macrophages and they have the activity to fight with the antigens a uh, foreign antibody antigens and then your hepatic stellet cells which also helps with uh, some amount of storage of vitamin a and other activities now coming to the function of the liver so liver function has been described under multiple categories but the primary function we need to understand is synthetic function metabolic function detoxification homeostasis storage function and production of bile salts so when we talk about your synthetic function sorry when we talk about your synthetic function we talk about albumin and the coagulation factors ceruloplasmin ferritin alpha 1 antitrypsin we talk about transport of the organic ions which is bilirubin bile acids and metabolization of drugs we talk about injury the uh, to the hepatocytes which is told by the serum enzyme test clearance of the substance from the plasma by the liver in form of ammonia detection of the fibrosis of liver and then chronic inflammation immune dysregulation in which specific auto antibodies and immunoglobulins are produced now lft helps to determine the area of hepatic injury as i already said and also the elevation pattern helps us to recognize the different differential diagnosis the basic test that we run day to day for lft is allen amino transferase alt which we also call as sgpt aspartate amino transferase which is ast which we also known as sgot alkaline phosphatase gamma glutamyl transferase or transpeptidase which is ggtp five nucleotidases total bilirubin conjugated or direct bilirubin unconjugated or indirect bilirubin prothrombin time the international normalized ratio that is your inr ldh total protein globulin and albumin now coming to each test separately amino transferase includes your ast and alt they are the markers of hepatocellular injury they participate also in gluconeogenesis now we have to understand the ast is not a liver sensitive test as compared to alt ast is cytosolic and mitochondrial isoenzyme and apart from liver it is also found in cardiac muscles kidney brain pancreas lungs leu and leukocytes rbcs these are the non hepatic sites so any disease involving uh, either of those organs or tissues can increase the ast now ast activity in neonates and infants is almost double of the adults and it usually starts declining and coming to the normal levels by 6 months of age now coming to as uh, alt it is a cytosolic enzyme which is found in a high concentration in liver the half life of alt is approximately 47 plus minus 10 hours alt is usually higher than ast in most types of the liver disease in which the activity of both enzymes is predominantly from hepatocyte cytosol hepatocellular injury and not necessary cell death triggers the release of these enzymes into the circulation both alt and ast is usually higher than normal in higher in male and than female 
दो ऑल्सो को रिलेट विद ओबेसिटी विद अ नॉर्मल रेफरेंस रेंज हायर दैन दोज विद द हाई बॉडी मास कैंडल्स कमिंग टू ए एल पी इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ फैमिली ऑफ जिंक मेटालो एनजाइम्स दैट आर हाईली कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड इन द माइक्रोवेलाइ ऑफ द बायल कैनालिकल ऑयल एज वेल एज सेवरल अदर टिश्यूज लाइक बोन इंटेस्टाइन प्लेसेंटर ऑल्सो इन आर बी सीज सिग्निफिकेंट इंक्रीज इन प्लाज्मा ए एल पी इज बेनाइन ट्रांजेंट सो इट कैन ऑल्सो बी सीन विथ इन ग्रोइंग चिल्ड्रन इट कैन बी सीन विथ नॉन लिवर कंडीशंस लाइक विटामिन डी डेफिशेंसी ट्रांजेंट हाइपर फॉस्फिटेमिया एंड अदर बोन डिसऑर्डर्स यूजली इफ दिस ए एल पी राइज इज अ बेनाइन कंडीशन दैन इट रिटर्न बैक टू नॉर्मल इन सिक्स टू एट वीक्स बट अ मार्क्ड इंक्रीज इन ए एल पी लाइक टू सेवरल थाउजेंड यूजली इंडिकेट्स अ पैथोलॉजी सिटिंग देर coming to the next enzyme which is your glycoprotein gamma glutamyl transferase or transpeptidase which is ggtp it is located on membrane of cells with high secretory and absorptive activities its function is basically to transfer the gamma glutamyl group to the peptides to another amino acids it is abundant in different other sources apart from your uh, biliary tract like kidneys pancreas intestine prostate testicles spleen heart and brain but it is mostly specific for biliary disease when we compare to alkaline phosphatase now ggtp levels are reported to be increased by an average of 12 fold in obstructive liver diseases compared to the alp which increases only 3 to 4 times so ggtp is slightly more sensitive than alp in this regard ggtp activity level in children may be a reliable index of bile duct damage it is useful indicator in separating the two forms of idiopathic cholestasis with or without bile duct involvement in infants diagnosing with biliary atresia and managed surgically the ggtp is usually high now we have to understand that we cannot pick up just one enzyme and then try to comment on the pattern of injury we have to see sgot sgpt alp gamma gt and also yes the bilirubin and then simultaneously seeing all this we determine the kind of injury liver has whether it is a hepatocellular whether it's a cholestatic or it's a mixed kind of injury now coming to the next parameter which is bilirubin it's a end product of heme catabolism unconjugated bilirubin is transported to the liver loosely bound to albumin this hemoglobin is sequestrated in your spleen it's loosely bound to albumin in the blood it goes to the liver there it is conjugated in the liver from liver it is excreted in the bile and it goes out from the a uh, small ducts to the large duct to the extra hepatic duct and into the intestine from intestine it is uh, some part is go goes back to back to the uh, endoreticular uh, sorry some uh, part goes back to the endohepatic circulation some part gets oxidized by the intestinal bacteria which is uh, which turns brown into the stercobilin and comes in the stool and some part is uh, the remainder of the part is uh, transported back to the blood to the kidney and is converted into yellow urobilin and is excreted giving urine the characteristic color now essentially bilirubin is water insoluble liver needs to conjugate it so if liver is not conjugating it properly the amount of indirect bilirubin increases like we see in hemolytic anemias or in disorders of conjugation for an example in kidney naja disease now it is conjugated in liver to form bilirubin glucuronide and subsequently secreted in the bile and gut respectively and follows the path as i told above coming to the synthetic function of test syn- synthetic function test albumin and your coagulation factors are the things which is actually produced by the liver albumin is synthesized by the liver parenchymal cells it is dependent on the colloidal osmotic pressure and dietary protein intake the maintenance of plasma albumin concentration can be achieved only by 10% of the normal hepatocyte and it has a half life of 21 days so usually reduction in albumin in a decompensated or a chronic liver disease is late also this albumin production depends upon the serum level of albumin because there is a negative feedback 
mechanism which works here and thereby controlling the albumin production by the liver traces of albumin can be found in almost all extracellular body fluids little is lost from body by excretion rest everything is used by the body now if there is any liver disease there is a fall in serum albumin reflecting decreased synthesis if liver function is normal and serum albumin is low there can be a issue of underlying poor nutrition or poor protein intake or a protein loss like in nephrotic syndrome mal- malabsorption protein losing entropy now we also need to understand that albumin is a negative phase reactant so many a times when we see infective hepatitis uh probably towards the later stage we may see a low albumin and get confused if it is a acute on chronic liver or if it's just an acute liver so here a follow up of albumin and the levels after the sepsis is resolved is very necessary to understand that how uh the liver is behaving and if it's synthesizing well once the acute event is gone coming to the prothrombin time it is the measurement of conversion of prothrombin to thrombin it is the easiest way to measure coagulation factor on day to day basis in labs which is almost available everywhere except for factor 8 all the factors are synthesized by the liver and the synthetic function of the liver uh so prothrombin time requires factor 2 5 7 and 10 and as these are made in the liver liver's function is crucial in coagulation uh there may be reasons for delayed prothrombin time as well which includes a warfarin consumption or conservative coagulopathy in form of dic and lastly vitamin k deficiency now vitamin k deficiency we need to understand can be nutritional many a times for an example either child has malnutrition or there is a history of malabsorption for us for an example in cholestasis cholestasis mein the bile is not excreted in the gut now bile is necessary for absorption of fat and fat soluble vitamins if bile is in there these vitamins are not absorbed in the blood and hence they be- they become deficient so they wonderfully respond to iv preparations and the inr dramatically improves after just one shot of vitamin k if there is a malabsorption causing vitamin k deficiency and usually when we have one kind of fat malabsorption uh, vitamin malabsorption we also expect other multivitamin which are fat soluble to be deficient so in such forms we usually tend to supplement all the a e d k four fat soluble multivitamins uh when we come next we come to the serological test these are liver related anti auto antibodies which are formed we do come across autoimmune hepatitis type 1 and 2 and also sclerosing cholangitis in children and we do see primary biliary cirrhosis in adults the test uh, the serology test we do usually is ana asthma anti lkm anti lc1 asthma these are basically cytosolic and intra hepatocyte uh, usually intra hepatocyte and cholangiocyte antigens which due to certain injury gets exposed in the blood and against it the um, auto antibodies are formed so sometimes we do tend to get falsely positive auto antibodies in the setting of viral hepatitis where lot of hepatocellular destruction has happened and these antigens have been exposed in the blood but they are falsely positive now coming to the secondary biochemical liver test we have alpha fetoprotein which is produced by the hepatoblast so it can be it is a tumor marker it is detected and also helps in uh prognostication or uh, and uh, monitoring of the primary hepatocellular malignancy such as hepatoblastoma and hcc and also they are positive or increases in the regenerating liver due to regenerating nodules uh, particularly after some liver injury or after chronic viral hepatitis like in hepatitis b or hepatitis c the other uh, biochemical liver tests are a carbo a carbohydrate antigen ca199 which is usual useful in monitoring the activity of autoimmune disease 
like primary sclerocholangitis and offer progresses to tumor of the bile ducts or cholangiocarcinoma. Some other tests include serum ferritin which can be useful in identifying hemochromatosis but ferritin is also a positive acute phase reactant so it may be increased in multiple illnesses in the time of stress or in the time of uh, hepatic failure or sepsis. So based on differential diagnosis, uh, so based on these different patterns of LFTs and uh, parameters, we come to few differential diagnosis. Now how do we come to it? First is your hepatocellular pattern of liver injury. Here your ALT and AST is out of proportionally high to ALP and bilirubin. So SGOT, SGPT is very high as compared to your ALP and bilirubin and there are diseases which usually give us a clue sometimes if SGPT is higher then we expect it to be a viral hepatitis, TA2 hepatitis, but chiari, streaming disease, autoimmune disease, hemochromatosis, drug induced, autoimmune diseases can present with an SGPT higher than SGOT. And the SGOT higher than SGPT usually we see in alcoholic liver disease, not seen in children, but in adults, steatohepatitis, hepatitis, cirrhosis sometimes, and non-hepatic causes mainly, for an example, hemolysis, myopathy, thyroid disease, exercise, and also in Wilson sometimes. The next pattern is a cholestatic pattern. Here, alkaline phosphatase, gamma GT, and bilirubin is high disproportionately high to your AST and ALT. Now here I need some time to explain you that not all the hyperbilirubinemias uh, direct type are cholestatic. We often intervariably tell direct hyperbilirubinemia as cholestasis but this is wrong. Direct hyperbilirubinemia can be hepatocellular injury and type or it can be cholestatic type so cholestasis itself says that bile is stasis and bile is going to stay because of obstruction in either small bile ducts or large bile ducts either it is from inside or from an external compression thereby obstructing the bile to get into the stool and causing a clay colored or a colic stool now in cholestatic pattern we have hepatobiliary causes and non-hepatic causes. Hepatobiliary causes may we see bile duct obstruction or atresias. We see primary biliary sclerosis, primary cholangi uh, sclerosing cholangitis. It can be drug induced. It can be an infiltrative disease like lymphomas and the myelodosis, sarcoidosis. It can be cystic fibrosis where your microvilli and cilia is defective. It can be hepatic metastasis or causes of infantile cholestasis. And non-hepatic causes, it can be due to bone diseases, adult pregnancy can be there, chronic liver failure, lymphomas, congestive heart failure, infection and inflammation. Now, just to he help us, our ratio has been formulated. It's uh, validated only in adults as of now, but definitely helps us to assess the pattern of liver injury in form of hepatocellular, cholestatic or mixed type of liver injury. The R ratio is calculated by the formula of uh, ALT value of the patient divided by ALT value, upper normal limit value of the lab divided by ALP value of the patient and upper normal limit of ALP of the lab. If R ratio is more than 5, it is defined as hepatocellular, less than 2 is cholestatic and 2 to 5 is mixed pattern. The actual function of the liver can be graded based on its ability to produce albumin and vitamin K dependent clotting factors. With the help of these, so we always have to remember not single single parameter can be interpreted. Sometimes these parameters just help us to understand how the liver is behaving, if it's improving, if it's not improving, if it's further getting uh, like the injury is aggravating or not so each parameter has to be coupled with other parameters to come to a conclusion that what kind of injury liver is having and if it's improving or not thank you